The worst thing about O'Leary's boys dropping by isn't the beating, but the fact that I can't tell what's theirs and what's Yale's. Can't say this is the ideal drink for an athlete. Then again, it could be your classic bookie thug lunch. Ugh, 17th century French fables. Mayor must be one boring old lady. So, you like your mob stories, don't you, Bobby? Seems like Bobby inherited something more than boxing skills from his father, besides the tendency to vanish into thin air, of course. Nice chain. Why would you want such a big closet for so few clothes? Unless someone emptied it recently. one of three. Do you know any of his relatives? Is his father ever, ever Avenarius? Avenarius? The boxer poet? Didn't he disappear 20 years ago? Judging by the general state of the apartment, they were leading a quiet life. I'm not sure how Yale's love of pickles will help me crack the case, but it's good to know. A woman's fragrance. Almost angelical.
That means she's been here recently, but why? What does Sweet Mary have to do with Yeo, the murder suspect? With people like O'Leary, you just never know. I didn't want to put Mary at risk. Why not take her a little something instead? I've never trusted angels. Mr. Black's hat? What a... Surprise? When they fall, they turn into demons. Joey told me he was going to spend the afternoon painting the gym and that Bobby would be fixing something up on the roof. So, after I found the body and called the police, I went to Bobby's place, but he wasn't there. How did you open the door to his apartment? I think it was already open. Everything is so... confusing. I'm sorry, Mr. Blacksad. Don't be. I'm here to figure it all out. What's your relationship with Bobby Yale? He was like a son to Joey, and we were about to get married, so... you know. Okay. I think it's time to set things straight. I know you were cheating on Dunn with Yale. Or was it the other way around? No! How can you even think of something like that? How can you convince me otherwise? I found a picture at Yale's apartment. It's you and him on a roller coaster. Care to explain, Miss Purnell? I'm not white, Mr. Black said. What? Seven of my great-grandparents were white. The eighth was black. According to law, I'm a black citizen, even if my skin says the contrary. Do you know what that means when you're born in North Arlington, Alabama? Segregated health care, with far worse conditions for colored people. We even have different water fountains, for God's sake. The separate but equal doctrine and all that... That garbage. And all the lies. That's why I moved here. No one knows what color my great-grandparents were. I'm black too. And I don't hide it. Well, at least you're a man. In any case, what's that have to do with Bobby Yale? He's my nephew, Mr. Black said. Joe and I first started taking care of poor Bobby when my sister died. That was when he was almost 15. 
The three of us went on that trip to Luna Park. So this is where Joe Dunn comes in. Bobby was the only one who knew about me and Joey. We were afraid that someone would use my past to ruin his career. It's not the first time I hear that story. You should have told me this sooner. I've been hiding it all my life. I'm sorry. TV and radio all in one. Where will these mad times lead us? Mary smells like... Actually, the whole room smells like a pie fresh out of the oven. So I can't identify any other fragrances. Fresh out of the oven. The whole room smells like pie. Are you sure you don't know where your nephew is? I've looked everywhere. He's nowhere to be found. Don't worry. I'll find him. Thank you. About Sonia Dunn and the ring, I managed to hide the truth from her. I appreciate it, but at the same time... What? No, nothing. Maybe... maybe she has a right to know. That cherry pie smells so good. I'm starting to get hungry. Thanks. I pulled it out of the oven right before you arrived. Oh, where are my manners? I'm the worst hostess in the world. Let me go get a knife from the kitchen. And you must be thirsty. Uh, let me see. OJ? Coffee? I'll take some coffee, thanks. She's wearing the same clothes in both pictures, so she's probably telling the truth. That's some beautiful artwork you got there.
now that there's almost no pie left. The scent has also disappeared. Interesting. Now Mary smells like a huge dog. Mary, when are you going to stop lying? I know your nephew is here. I can smell him. What? No. I already told you I don't know where he is. Stop playing around and tell me. Where is he? You can search the whole house if you want. Go ahead. He's not here. Wait a minute. She's not the one who smells like that. That's where Bobby Yale's scent is coming from. So, that's why you were sitting there. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. Could you step aside so I can check, please? Uh, please go. Mary, for Christ's sake, put that knife down, would you? Leave or I'll... Mary, I came here to help. I mean uh, it. I don't want to hurt you. Leave me alone! Bobby! Side, Bobby. But I'm not on yours. <laughs> 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 Do as I say. Go on, call an ambulance. Do it now. In the face of a heart attack, there's two things you can't forget. One, stay calm. Two, one chest compression per second. One Mississippi. Two Mississippi. Three Mississippi. Four Mississippi. Five Mississippi. Six Mississippi. Bobby. Oh, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. Bobby. Oh. Thank you. I had lots of reasons to consider this a great day. 
had investigated a suicide case. I had discovered that, in truth, we were dealing with a murder. I had found and captured the prime suspect. And I had saved a life. And yet, everything in me screamed that something was going wrong. Terribly wrong. Promise me, Promise you me. won't take the law into your own hands. I'd like to think I'd we're like not just vigilantes. vigilantes. I want a gun! What the hell? Bang, bang, bang! A fair amount of violence, extortion, and casualty. I hate I detectives. Hate detectives. That you, Smirnoff? You seem agitated. Nightmare? <sighs> How long have I been sleeping? I just got here. Anyway, why don't you go home? In his current condition, Yale's not going anywhere. Besides, we'll take it from here. Who is that? Can we trust him? I know how to pick my men, John. You? I'm not so sure. You promised me you wouldn't intervene. If I hadn't intervened, Bobby Yale could be dead. If you had warned me, maybe we could have avoided a heart attack. Anyway, what's done, is done. When... when exactly did you realize that he killed Dunn? Out of sheer curiosity, I'm a cop after all. To be honest, I'm not so sure Yale killed anyone. How about the motive? Any ideas? Yale belonged to a street gang for several years. He even pointed a gun at Dunn. Wow, that's interesting, to say the least. In any case, hopefully Yale will tell us more. Would you let me ask him some questions when he wakes up? I know you will, with or without my permission. So, I'd rather not feel betrayed. In exchange, drop by the station when you can. Your investigation could really help my men. Who, by the way, must be waiting for me to interrogate Mary Purnell. Boy, she was hard to pry from Yale's side. Don't go too soft on her. That girl's quite the liar. Will do. Thanks for the advice. And as for you, go get some rest. God knows you need it. I will. Thanks for the advice. Tell the nurses to look at that face of yours. You look like a film detective in his last scene. I'm afraid this film isn't over yet. For your sake, I hope you're wrong. 
You're in charge now, officer. Okay. I'll send you relief in six hours. Understood? Doctor. Who are... Oh, detective. Congratulations. You fared pretty well against that kid. Better than most would have. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me... Let's just say I got lucky. We, as a society, simply don't trust reptiles. But that's not the real problem. The real problem is our extended belief that there's logic to that distrust, that it's natural and well-founded. How's Yale? Is he awake? Oh yeah. Go check on him before he falls asleep again. Although, try not to bother him with too many questions. Will this have long-term effects on his health? Um, it's too soon to tell. He did have a heart attack after all. Go away. I don't want to see you. The doctor told me to sleep. I rarely get to interrogate a suspect with his guard down in a place as quiet as this. Getting the chance to study his body language with no distractions is a rare gift. His heart rate is increasing. It could mean that he's lying, but it could also just be pure, unadulterated rage. He's looking straight at me. If he couldn't hold my stare, I'd think he's lying, but that's not the case. He's clenching his fist. A sign of contained anger. Clenched fist. Fast heart rate. Fixed stare. He feels some genuine rage towards me. I'm sorry you don't want to see me, but... I saved your life, son. Maybe my aunt feels gratitude. I certainly don't. Luckily, I just got my medication. I'll be snoozing soon. All right, I'll just cut to the chase. Is he lying, or did his heart rate speed up out of rage? Is he holding back his rage? He can't look me in the eye. I'd say he's lying. Why did you kill Joe Dunn? What? Are you trying to confuse me? Joe hanged himself. He seems about to burst into tears. Is he angry or sad? Why is his heart rate skyrocketing? Dunn was too short to hang himself with that rope. So... It's true? 
He was murdered. I know the murder weapon was yours. What? The rope? I don't get it. What weapon do you mean? Don't play with me, boy. The chest expander. An expander? I've never had one of those. All right. Let's just say that I... I believe you. The murderer killed Dunn with a chest expander and planted evidence to make us believe it was suicide. But he also left enough clues behind to make sure we found the true murder weapon. Then he put the chest expander box in your locker to frame you. Do you know anyone that twisted and who also happens to have a mo- I... I don't know. What about Sonia Dunn? Sonia? I doubt it. She's odd, but she's his daughter. I've seen worse, believe me. Maybe it was... What am I saying? Jake could never pull off something like that. Nothing. Never mind. What about Frank Cassidy? Do you think he has a motive? Maybe. A few weeks ago, Joe took me to a boxing manager's association meeting. Headed by Cassidy. Yeah. He was obsessed with making it illegal for boxers to fight without a manager. Or without an associated manager. Everyone seemed to go along with it until Joe spoke up. He said that would lower us to mob status. That Cassidy had founded the association just to make money by monopolizing the sport. That made others think twice. And Cassidy ended up empty-handed. Poor Cassidy. Desmond O'Leary certainly seems twisted enough. Did he have anything against Dunn? I'm not sure if they knew each other. At least not in person. About a month ago, Joe kicked one of O'Leary's men out of the gym. He was trying to give a business card to... Jake was the army. Yeah, exactly. Did Jake tell you about that? Something like that. Black Sad. I think I owe you an, um... Uh... You know, my father disappeared when I was six. Right after winning a fight. We never heard from him again. Do you know what that does to a kid? Who knows where I'd be if Joe Dunn hadn't been in my life. Even when I lost my way and put a gun to his head years later, he still took me under his wing and managed to steer me in the right direction. And now that he's gone, you're risking your life to find his murderer. Thanks. Thank you for... The number of cigarette butts is inversely proportional to my hours of sleep. Ah, damn. Is that eye movement normal? The hands say a lot about what's going on inside a person.
He seems restless. Should I tell someone? See, there's no fever whatsoever. He must be having a nightmare. Are you sure? Wouldn't you have nightmares too after what he went through yesterday? I know I sure wouldn't sleep. I have nightmares myself, but those go way back. Oh, the poor thing. Do you know what my nightmare is? It's that, that witch I have to work with. Oh. Good thing she's got trauma surgery at 12.30, but I wish it were a little sooner, you know? Anyway, thank you for letting me know and, and for bringing him in. You don't know how excited I am to be involved in a criminal case. It might not be important, but I need to take a look at his medical report. Footprints don't match. If Yale killed Dunn, he did it without stepping in the paint or in different shoes. Jim, Sheikh Ostiambi speaking. Jake, it's Black Side. I just wanted to... I have work to do, John. Call you later. Ronald, get on that ring!
Hi. You're awake, handsome? I'll take a pack of Morley's, please. Honey, get me a pack of Morley's for Mr. Hanson. Yale's medical report is right there. Mind if I take a look? Hmm, no, I don't think so, handsome. Hi, Rena. Still with us, handsome? What if you show me Yale's report and I buy you dinner? You're handsome, all right. But I'm not stupid. I won't be able to read Yale's medical report if she's around. Jerry Highfill. Long time no see. Black Sad, I didn't want to wake you. How's the boy? Asleep. I hope he recovers in time for the fight. I got tickets! Although between you and me, he doesn't stand a chance. It'll be a fun bout, nonetheless. Not like this. God, this is boring. You want to smoke? Don't smoke or drink. No vice for me. Smoking's dirty. Alcohol goes straight to your head. And women, they're all just mean. Well, everyone except mine. Are you sure about that? Not even one little vice? Nope. Between you and me, when someone gives in to vice, it's because something's missing. Something in their life just isn't right. I've got a good wife, a good job, a good house, a good TV, and a good hobby. Sports. Well, watching them, that is. What else do I need, eh? Black said, vice is for losers. Man, I'm bored. You say you've got a good job, and yet you're bored. Well, it's just a figure of speech, really. I like my job. Is it boring? Yes, but 
I can entertain myself with a good fight to a football game. Well, watching them, that is. Are the odds against Yale that bad? The boy's talented, don't get me wrong. But stone is stone, you know? I bet half my pay, but you know, no vice for me. Well, I'm going back in. I won't be able to read Yale's medical report if she's around. Something's wrong with him. I need to find out what. It seems like the Doe nurse will be assisting Dr. Talbot during his 12.30 surgery. In four hours. Could I get them to operate any sooner? Something's wrong with him. I need to find out what. Get Dr. Gregor Talbot, please. Yes, one minute. Um, no, actually, Dr. Talbot won't be in until 12.30, according to my registry. Can I ask who's calling, please? Sherry, this is Dr. Talbot. We have to reschedule the 12.30 procedure. I want everyone in the operating room in five minutes. If anyone gives you any grief, tell them it's a matter of life or death. Understood? A matter of life and death, a matter of life and death. You've gotta be kidding me. something that you have. Oh, only if you guess why I'm giving it to you. You want to help me solve a criminal investigation. Well, aren't you smart? But be quick about it. You hear me, huh? If that witch comes back...
What? What does it say here? Ah, you know doctors. The top handwriting is mine. Let's see. Extra systole and dehydration caused by panic attack. Extra what? You know, arrhythmia, like skipped heartbeats. What about this here? It's a good thing I know that Mr. Yale is in Dr. Ferguson's hands. Otherwise, I'd be worried. Hey, no means no, miss. You really don't know who I am, do you? Miss, I've got orders. And the fact is, those orders say that... Hey, you are, Miss Dunn. Huh? Tell him, Black Sad. I can't get through that thick skull of his. You see, hi, Phil. She's the owner of Yale's gym. A woman? Whether the kid recovers or not depends entirely on her. Between you and me, and all due respect, miss, but aren't we taking this woman's liberation a little too far? All right, let her in, but she's your responsibility. Thanks for convincing the cop. You hired me to find Yale. I wanted you to see him with your own eyes. I see. Anyway, you did your job. I'll send you a check the day after the fight. You can leave now. gonna do something stupid. Sonia, don't. You killed my father. You said so yourself. You can't take justice into your own hands. Believe me, it will haunt you as long as you live. Look at your face. He did that, didn't he? How could he not be guilty? Your father sacrificed everything to pay your way through college. If you do this, you'll destroy the future your father wanted you to have. Shut up! None of that matters! How could he not be guilty? Your father wouldn't want you to do this. He was a just man, and this is not justice. It's okay. It's okay. <clears throat> Uncle Tim! Sweetie, I came back from Los Angeles as soon as I could. I told you not to rush back. Come on now, honey. Aren't you going to introduce me to your friend? No, this is John Blacksad, the detective who found Bobby. Oh, so this is strictly professional. I thought you had some good news for your uncle. No, Uncle Tim, don't be silly. Don't be silly? Look at you, smart. Educated, as dazzling as the brightest of stars. Every single man in this city should be at your feet. Come on, we'd better let him rest. Hmm. I see. Let's say you're right and Bobby Yale is innocent. Who should we focus on now? We? Well, your father turned down my money, but he made me promise one thing, that I'd take care of you if anything happened to him. But I can... I know you're perfectly capable of managing that gym on your own, but we don't even know if Yale will be ready to fight Stone. Besides, someone seems really invested in stopping that fight. And someone has to pay Mr. Blacksad to get to the bottom of all this. Please, 
talk some sense into her. It's your life. As much as you love your uncle, it's up to you to decide whether you want his help or not. Black said, I was just starting to like you. All right. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you so much. All right. Stop crying or you'll ruin your makeup, honey. Now fix yourself up and I'll buy you some breakfast. Uh, wait. My purse. I'll get it. It must be... Black said, wait a minute. I think she needs some time alone. Just like you and me. Listen, boy. Do whatever it takes to find Joe's murder. Whatever it takes. If things get messy, don't worry. I'll clean them up. Deal? I'm not a vigilante. Well, suit yourself. Just get that ball to the end zone. No. Are you telling stories about the great iron arm again? Wait a minute. Of course. The milestone's quarterback. Tim Iron Arm <laughs> Thorpe. <laughs> it's a good thing folks usually recognize me sooner. Black said, you coming to breakfast? I'd love to, but I have to go ask for a favor. The investigation required that I ask Jake for a small favor. Or demand it, if worse came to worse. Not the smartest cookie in the jar, nor the most tactful. But do I trust him? No. Do I consider him a friend? Yes. I hope he never feels inclined to hit me. He's twice my size. He's been training with those same shorts for... Who knows how long? Hey, Jake. Not now, John. How many hits does a boxer take to the head throughout his career? This one's got extra padding, just like Jake. Hey, hi. Hey, focus, will ya? Hey, Jake. Damn it, wait a minute. Hey, Jake. Damn it, wait a minute. The racist brain is so full of hatred that there's no space for trifles such as common sense or, say, spelling. 
but this most cultured writer spotted the error and attempted to correct it, not sure what to make of the outcome. That lizard isn't Yale's doctor. All right, that's enough. Hmm. Take five. Go on. What, John? What's so important? Why are you coaching that guy? Oh, that's right. You don't know. Sonya asked me to run the gym. Well, at least the fun part. As soon as Bobby Yale's back on his feet, I'll turn him into a champ. I'll make him crush stone. Just you wait. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Is it the first time you coached anyone? Yeah, but... Uh... You think I can't do this, don't you? Well, screw you. We'll win that fight. Have you noticed anything strange about Sonya? I don't know. Yesterday she said she hated the gym. But it also seemed like she wanted to save the place. Do you get any of this? I sure don't. It might not have seemed that way, but she loved her dad. Believe me, I've got reasons to be certain. Could you tell me where Old Erie's headquarters are? Uh, what for? No, no, no. You could get me into trouble. No way. You lied to me yesterday, and being the good friend that I am, I kept your secret. You owe me. I don't think I'd keep protecting you if we weren't friends. Although, if we were friends, you wouldn't hesitate to help me. Tell me, Jake, are we friends or not? Damned cat. All right. O'Leary's hideout is in the basement of a Chinese restaurant. But I don't even know how to get in. Well. I'll see you tonight. Wait, were we supposed to meet? Of course. Your place, 11 p.m. See you there. Ronald, the break's over. After 30 hours of work and several beatings, every bone in my body ached for a bed. Now it's my turn. So I went home to recharge. <clears throat> because the night ahead was bound to be promising. What do you know about that basement? Well, let me think. Nothing? Come on, Jake, for Christ's sake. I'm running out of threats to get you talking, Jake. And frankly, 
I don't want things to get violent. I've come to get O'Leary several times, but they always make me wait in the dining room. One day it was so late that the restaurant was closed. They made me call from a payphone in that alley over there to let them know I was here. A few minutes later, O'Leary came out the back door. That red one there. All right, you stay by the payphone. Wait till I'm inside. If you see anyone, call the same number you did that one time. That got it? Screw you. A promising night indeed. I'm guessing it lights up when they ring at the main door. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Stupid pig! Does he need a shotgun to deal with suppliers? <laughs> Stupid pig! <laughs> Stupid coyote! Would he even notice if I got in? Maybe it leads to the basement. <laughs> Something tells me he'd notice <laughs> me no matter how stealthy I was. Or maybe this is the way to the basement and not that corridor. <laughs> Stupid rabbit. A bit too high to climb, if the basement I'm looking for were in that building. Could it be an elevator shaft? How does this thing open? If only I could reach that box. What happened? Should we run for it? Do I look like I'm in a hurry? There's a trap door on the ground, right by the restaurant. Does that sound familiar? Huh? The, the restaurant or the trap door? Okay. Forget it. Are you done? What do you think? I need your brute force, Jake. Uh, what's wrong? Is the little kitten too, uh... And your silence.
lost ourselves when it's far too late. I was expecting some frozen bodies. Hmm. It won't budge. Does O'Leary have a network of pals? The odds are incredibly in Stone's favor. I guess that he's the reigning champion, and Bobby Neal is just a contender, but maybe word got out about his condition. Wow, I didn't realize you could place so many bets on a single baseball game.
16 days until the fight. Sometimes I forget that criminals, even the office variety, have family and kids. Anyway, maybe things aren't so bad on the dark side. It looks like a summary of all the bets that come in. Day, amount, bet, wagerer. Wait a minute, did O'Leary himself bet five grand on Yale? A little thingamajig that adds on its own. What'll they think of next? Ireland? concealed file after file of celebrity reports with all sorts of shady information, ranging from S to Z. Almost all of them were athletes. Is that what O'Leary meant when he said that detectives and police officers were his friends? I wonder how many spy for him. If I were to pitch in, who would I spy on? Thorpe had been a rising football star before the war, which he came back from with honors and decorations. After the truce, he resumed his career. He won three season trophies and a couple of MVP awards. He retired after an accident that left him paralyzed from the waist down. He started his own sports advertising agency four years ago, but according to the files, O'Leary hadn't even tried to corrupt him. According to Stone's report, he was so clean, not to mention hard to corrupt, that O'Leary opted for a more subtle strategy. Apparently, when he broke up with the tennis player Helen Moore, he set her up with Stone. Lucky for him, they hit it off. As I put away the report, I stopped in my tracks. Did I really want to risk knowing what O'Leary had on my good friend? The incorruptible police commissioner? I sighed in relief. O'Leary had tried to buy Smirnoff on several occasions, but failed. Luckily, O'Leary had nothing on him, or me. In Bobby Yale's folder, all I found was a log of his incredible stats as an aspiring champion. 20 victories, 16 by Naka. Although, at the end of the report, someone had underlined one word several times. Untouchable. Ireland too.
Helen Moore's file was, by far, one of the juiciest. She had been just a run-of-the-mill tennis player until O'Leary launched her career by rigging enough games to help her climb the ranking. However, O'Leary hadn't fixed any of her games in over a year. In spite of that, she remained undefeated. Be as it may, it was clear that O'Leary had enough information to ruin her career. Strange as it may seem, the reports reveal that O'Leary had hired Jake as a bodyguard precisely because he was absolutely clean. Apparently, he liked to surround himself with honest people when he mingled with the high society. Luckily or not, files N through R included no one that I could somehow connect to the case. The report on Yale's father was the shortest of all, since only his name was left. Why? Cassidy's report was possibly the longest among all of O'Leary's files. Apparently, the rivalry went way back, so much so that they spied on each other in the most unthinkable ways. At least I was able to confirm what Yale had told me. Cassidy had threatened Dunn after he refused to join the manager's union. Dunn's integrity was legendary, even in O'Leary's shady reports, just like Yale had said. Dunn had kicked one of O'Leary's men out of the gym when he found him snooping around. Crossler? The good news is, I don't need lockpicks to open it. The bad news, I didn't bring explosives. Even Dunn had a gun in his office. O'Leary couldn't possibly be the exception. Dunn had $200 in his safe. O'Leary had about 20000 in a drawer. Ireland, of course. This guy's obsessed. I hope I never become the object of O'Leary's obsession.
Limited edition copy two of three. We listen, if you call it listening, to the sentimental romance. Your eyes act like the moon. If they're not together anymore, why does O'Leary keep so many pictures of romantic moments with Helen Moore? Jake. Someone was coming. Are we or are we not exemplary workers, Jimmy? Here it is, middle of the night. And we're working extra hours. Hey, Jimmy, what do you think about that? I think he's scared stiff, Desmond. <laughs> Why's that, Jimmy? We're giving you the red carpet treatment. We even let you in the boss's office. You're one lucky fellow. <laughs> you can't say I don't treat you well, Jimmy. <laughs> Yeah. Speak, you moron. Yeah, yeah, uh, very well. Uh, why are you... Shh. Calm down. How long have you worked for me, Jimmy? Three, 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 three months. Three months. Oh, yeah. I hired you right after your cousin Martin died. I need your opinion. How would you punish someone for ruining an innocent man's life with a hit and run, Jimmy? I, I don't know. And tell me, what about you, Wilson? What would you do? No, please, please, please. I didn't do anything, I swear. He was a good guy. <laughs> of course, you already knew that. You knew him better than me, right? He was my cousin. I. That's why I hired you, Jimmy. You see, Martin was a dear friend. And his widow said you were a nice kid. That you'd do a good job. And you needed the money. And I. I have a soft spot for those in need. Please. But, uh. You know what? I talked to her just yesterday. She told us you did some naughty things to her with that gun, Jimmy. No, no, no. That's no way to treat a widow, is it? <laughs> She's lying. Why would I do that? What about the kid? <laughs> Are you so sure you know how long a kid can hold his breath? With his little head inside a toilet bowl? Son of a bitch. I didn't want to. It was his idea. Selfishly, I was glad I hadn't risked my life to save Jimmy. Maybe not even someone like him deserves to die. But one could also argue that I didn't deserve to die for someone like him. Who's your boss? Give me a name! Cassidy. It was his idea. He said you'd hired me if I'd managed to scare the widow, and I just... All right, all right. Let's just... Calm down now. It's gonna be okay. There are two sacred principles that rule my life. The first principle is the love for my family. I'd do anything to protect them. 
The second principle... I never put my future in the hands of fate. I always play it nice and safe. And I would even add a third principle. Or, better yet, a rule. If anything threatens either of these two crucial principles, I take matters into my own hands. You see where this is going? For the first time, I got someone killed. Even though all I really did was rat him out. No, I... no, 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 I just... Stop I, interrupting I, me, Jimmy! No. It's not polite! Sorry. They're all the same. So rude! You know what? Let's leave it at that. You're going to give a message to that disgusting walrus Cassidy, aren't you? Yeah, 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 sure. Whatever you say. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Good boy. What? 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 what, what what's the message? Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. You still don't get it, do you? You are the message. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Come on. Wrap him up. Make sure Cassidy gets the message for breakfast, will you? I hope he chokes on it. Got it. Hmm, where are you hiding, little fishy? Once again, you didn't get to hear the end of my story. Just where do you think you're going, putty kiss? <laughs> Two sacred principles rule my life. The first is... The love I feel for my family. The second... Never leave destiny in the hands of fate. I always play it nice and safe. And I'd even add a third principle, or better yet, a rule. If anything, if anything threatens either of these two prin- I take matters into my own hands. The first time that someone died because of me, even though all I did was rat him out, well, that guy ended up in the Hudson River, right off Pier 27. He's gotta be even wetter than that fish by now. <laughs> You should have seen his face. It's interesting what comes to mind when you think you're about to die. Suddenly all I could think about was how much I wanted a pet fish. You too, Bruno? Anyway, I was 14 years old, and I still dream about it. But it's widow and it's done. By then, I was adamant about buying a fish. But first... That was that. Never again. Nowadays, whether it's me who pulls the trigger or not, I have zero regrets. What's more, I sort of enjoy it. In case anyone had any doubts about who's the boss around here, I'll put my dirty feet on his luxurious table to prove that all of this is mine. His pupils are dilated, and there's a slight grin on his face. The bastard is enjoying himself.
The guy never hesitates to pull the trigger. Even if I hadn't seen what he did to Jimmy, I'd know he's not bluffing. When a mob boss declares his love of family, it can only mean that A, he won't hesitate to ruin yours, and B, he's cheating on his wife. I knew I had it in me to get out of that place alive. No. O'Leary's wife is having an affair with Colbert? Should I serve this to O'Leary on a silver platter? Or threaten Colbert so he'll get me out of this mess? And, well, that's it, I think. <laughs> you know, Black Sad, I've never made it this far. Congratulations, you're going in style. I didn't want to interrupt you because I respect you and your word. Colbert told me to come here. What? Me? No way! You did what? Colbert? When? Uh, well, uh... <laughs> yeah, remember? When I called you on the phone. Don't you remember that cocky drunk guy? Uh, no. He kept bragging about how he was banging another guy's wife. Oh? Oh yeah, weird times, huh? Yeah, and you congratulated me for finding Yale and saving your life. Several times! Then I asked you if O'Leary would thank me somehow. And I thought it was a very reasonable assumption. And then you told me to come here to ask the boss himself. Yeah, I think you deserve it. Right, Desmond? Oh, black sad, black sad, black sad. Thank you. And sorry for jumping to conclusions. First, you get a random beating from my men. And now this. Although you have to admit I had my reasons to be suspicious, you ran away from Yale's apartment, didn't you? But as you well know, you can't trust anyone in this world. Take it. It's only fair. I want to bet it all on the fight, on Sonia Dunn's behalf. Oh, what a romantic you are. We listen, if you call it listening, to the sentimental romance. Your eyes act like the moon. Ah, a cultured man. Anyway, go ahead, place your bet. I bet it all on Yale. <laughs> oh, Black Sad. Aren't these odd hours to pay me a visit? Your message was important, but certainly not urgent. It could have waited until tomorrow, don't you think? We cats and wolves hunt at night. I wish I was a noir fiction writer. At this very moment, I could write a couple of pointed, ironic remarks for the narrator to recount what I just lived through. The dark, crooked alleys of New York reminded me of the state of my own soul. Hmm. No. Fall loomed over me with the... 
nightfall struck me with the full force of my long-lost youth. <clears throat> nah, not that. <clears throat> Fall descended over me with the full weight of a guilty conscience. <clears throat> God, that's worse. <clears throat> What were you thinking? He wants him alive! I felt fall seep through my bones like the pain of a good beating. Hmm. <laughs> Mediocre. But appropriate. Against all odds, next morning I got up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. And I had my kind, unknown assailants to thank. The beating had taken its toll, but for the first time in months, I had slept like a baby. Oh, come on, Helen, focus! All right, take five. We'll work on that double backhand later. Mr. Blackmore, what can I do for the FBI? Cooperate with law enforcement. All you have to do is talk. <laughs> I like to speak through my actions, but still, could you be more specific? Maybe if we could speak in private? Alec! Coming! You've got four minutes, Mr. Blackmore, so... Make them count? We're aware of at least six rigged games during your first year as a professional player. And? You won all of them. <laughs> Are you trying to offend me? I give my all on the court. I can't be held accountable if my rivals don't do the same. Go interrogate them. They say you're currently involved with Al Stone, the boxer. Is that correct? Wow. The FBI sure knows what it's doing. So, out of the 100 million Americans who know about that, who did you extort to get such highly confidential information? Don't beat around the bush. We know why you're with him. Oh, so you like his biceps too? Desmond O'Leary asked you to seduce Stone. Why? What? No, I met Al by chance at a party. A party hosted by Desmond O'Leary. No, that can't be. No one is that shrewd. Not even him. Damn, I hate that bastard! We know you smuggle contraband during your international tournaments. Oh, really? Are you sure? Like, what exactly? Hmm. I think she called my bluff. Or did she? Should I follow through or say I was kidding? You smuggle tobacco. <laughs> You're just making it up as you go, aren't you? To think I was starting to like you. Come on, what do you really want from me? 
We know about you and Desmond O'Leary. Wow, your sagacity never ceases to amaze me. Wait, I get it. They must wrap your FBI sandwiches in gossip magazines. The thing is, well... <sighs> you see, I'd love to wipe out that part of my past, but whatever. Do you have any regrets? Ads pay more than trophies. Can you believe it? Being associated with such a shady character can only damage my reputation. Trust me, never get involved with a married man. Anyway, at least now I know why you mentioned the rigged games. I can't blame you, Mr. Blackmore. I understand why I seem suspect. Although, I doubt the FBI would ever get this involved in a sporting scandal. <laughs> What do you really have against O'Leary? And please, don't say illegal gambling. O'Leary is a murderer. Every criminal organization has blood on his hands. His is no exception. And we have proof. Well, what's the big deal? At least it's not a matter of, uh, I don't know. Smuggling tobacco. I'm serious, Miss Moore. America can't afford to let anyone shake its foundations like that. And America's sweetheart can't afford it either. Help us out. Talk to us. And why should I, Mr. Blackmore? What do I stand to gain or lose? I'm sure you're aware that we could end your career if what we know goes public. But no one wants that to happen, right? This is actually quite simple. One lucky gal. You have a light, sir? The pearly white teeth of someone who barely smokes. Am I making her nervous? Damn. I'm almost out of fluid. Wanna know my trick? Go down to start, then up with it, and then down again. Don't worry, I'm not making any assumptions about your masculinity. Almost. Thanks. I don't know what you want me to say. You're trying to frame O'Leary, perhaps rightfully so, but I think you're barking up the wrong tree. Believe me. If I had the slightest... Come on, Helen. <sighs> Time to work on your backhand. Let's go. <sighs> Do you smoke? Nice meeting you, Mr. Blackmore. Did you bring my water? She tossed the cigarette in your face? <laughs> You're such a loser! <laughs> Too bad I was busy chasing Cassidy. If that had been me, America would no longer have a sweetheart. <laughs> so, what do you say, you and me, we change places next time, huh? Your turn. Now tell me, what did you find out? Ah, you're gonna love this. You ready? I've got news, but I happen to also have a pl- uh. Black Sad.
much, Mr. Black said. Huh? Oh, Mrs. Colbert. When you told me about my husband, I kicked him out. But this morning he came back with a bouquet of roses and asked me to forgive him. He said he had some kind of big scare yesterday and that he hasn't stopped thinking about me since. He wants to take me to Niagara Falls on a second honeymoon. And? I threw the roses in his face and I told him to shove Niagara Falls up his ass. You think I could forget what he's done just like that? I don't want to get into anybody's business here, but what if your husband really is sorry? Are you telling me to give him a second chance? Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah. No. N no, actually, I'd rather not say anything. All right. But I'm going to hold you accountable. If that two-timing rhino betrays me, I'll scratch his eyes out and I'll smash his head in. And yours, too. Uh, but what just happened? Is there anything you didn't tell me? Maybe. But now it's your turn. Tell me about Cassidy. Uh, 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 Come on, spit it out. I didn't find anything suggesting that Cassidy had anything to do with Dunn's murder, but... That's quite the tale. But I know Cassidy will be playing poker tonight with one Howard M. Farnham II, a Texas tycoon looking to get his claws on the boxing business. I also know that he and Cassidy have never met in person, and that Farnham, who's staying at the Balford Hotel, hasn't left his room. Apparently, he spent the night with three bottles of bourbon. So, here's my incredible plan. I'll go to the hotel, <laughs> I'd knock him out, huh, and then, take his place in the poker game. That way, I'll get Cassidy talking. What do you think? Incredible, right? Huh? Huh? Uh huh? Didn't we agree that you would handle Helen more while I dealt with Cassidy next time? No? Good afternoon, Mr. Farnham. What's going on? Allow me to introduce myself. John Blackmore. I work for Frank Cassidy. He asked me to bring you these bottles so you could choose which one you prefer for the game. Oh, sure. I was fixing to leave, but I guess them monuments ain't going anywhere. <laughs> well, come on in then. Getting in Farnham's room was easy. Earning his trust was another story. But I always have an ace up my sleeve. Blackmore? You okay, partner? The best way to earn someone's trust is to make them believe they've earned yours. And sometimes, the best way to fake it is to tell the truth. I... I don't know where to begin. They beat me up once. What's to say they won't do it again? Dang. What about your boss, Cassidy? Didn't he do nothing? Well, let's just say he's taking care of it. Well then, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Be thankful you ain't in Texas. Sure enough, you'd have yourself a hole in the head, boy. I'll pray to our Lord Jesus so those bastards get what they deserve and you get your honor back. 
Now, did you know nothing heals a wound like booze? One of the tricks of this trade is to be wary of the biases we all have. They cloud our judgment and blur the person in front of us, painting them with the shades of our preconceived notions of who they should be. But every once in a while, you run into someone so locked in personality that they can only be regarded as a stereotype. Farnham was a disgrace, not only to himself, but to Texas and the entire human race. To think I had to impersonate him. I wish I was like you. You seem so content, so free of burdens. Stop right there, partner. You think this old dog don't have ticks? Let me tell you something about my first wife. Woo-wee! Once I had gained Farnham's trust, The hard part was deciding what I needed to know to become him and not get myself killed. What can I do for you, sir? Farnham was one hell of a drinker. I had to get the information out of him before he drank himself unconscious. Otherwise, I'd have to find that information myself. Yes, I got a Vietnamese shave last night. Oh, please, come in. Of course, I remember you. Take a seat. I'm sure you'll understand we can't be too careful. Our host has many enemies, and someone has to keep them at bay. Sure, I get it. I'm glad to hear that. Now, please answer my question. How much does it cost to get yourself a clean Vietnamese shave? Then, sure enough, booze put the nail on the coffin of my first marriage. You know, the wife that caught me cheating with the maid. <laughs> my second marriage, too. You know what I did to her daddy? Same old, same old with several mistresses. So I decided to stick to my guns and only deal with hookers. Even if I did end up <laughs> marrying some. <laughs> I feel you, Mr. Farnham. So I'm going to be honest with you. I'm Cassidy's slave. He lent me the money for a game deposit, and I lost it all. Now I have to work off my debt. Oh, Cassidy's not your problem, son. It's poverty. Sure enough, I had to pay my own deposit this morning to y'all, and that was just petty cash to me. Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me one of the seats. What do you think I am, boy? Wait, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. I gotta get somewhere. Just a sec, I'll get it. I, I just, just put it over, over, uh, I think it's, uh, I'll be right back.
Ding Dong? Interesting name for a town. Why didn't you just say you had the receipt in your pocket? I'm almost certain, but tell me, who told you to come to this barber shop? Let me tell you a little secret about my first wife, sonny boy. When I met that woman, she had no manners, no money, no Find him. My God, if it ain't the hero of the day. It's not going to be easy to sound Texan, but I'll give it my best shot. This will surely imbue me with the Texan spirit. Nothing says Texan like a cowboy hat. I probably don't need to imitate his gestures during the game, but it certainly anyway, wouldn't hurt Kenny, to try. Thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. <laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> the craziest goddamn Texan in New York. My good old friend Kenny, craziest goddamn Texan in New York. You know how many Kennys there are in New York? Kenny who? So besides when and where the game will be, the password, and the money Farnham dished out, what else do I need? They smell like a party. Luckily, there was only one Kinney in Farnham's address book. Kinney Eeks, residing at... Cornell Plaza, Manhattan. Stunning penthouse. I'm not surprised. Mr. Eeks has excellent taste. Do you happen to know what he asked for the last time he was here? No matter how superficial someone may seem, there's always a way to win their heart. Don't tell me, Billy Pop. This here is my new friend, Farnham. Am I right? Shh. 
Sure enough, your barber was fixing to give me a shave. <laughs> you can get a good shave at another time. Billy Bob is always at our beck and call. Of course. Hey, come on. Let's get in there before they finish all the bourbon without us. I haven't frisked him yet, sir. I don't think that'll be necessary. Mr. Farnham here, he's a nine as Texan. And I'm sure he'll hand over his weapon if we ask him to. Right. I would if I had a gun on me, but I don't. Are you kidding me? An unarmed Texan? Just pulling your leg, Cassidy. Take care of my girl, you hear? <laughs> All righty. I was starting to get antsy. It'll be my pleasure. Welcome, gentlemen. Chips are on the table and guns are in the safe. Now. We got a lovely night of poker ahead of us full of smoking and bourbon. So let's get started. Take a seat, Mr. Farnham. Let me introduce you. To my right, wearing great boxes and weighing in at 140 pounds, the owner of Pink Vice, the largest meat market in all of Manhattan. In other words, a real son of a bitch. No offense to the women he exploits. Our reigning champion, Oswald Quince. A title I aim to keep, provided our new contender here doesn't interfere. Y'all are dealing with the worst player in Texas. You're just trying to make me overconfident, aren't you? The truth is that our friend Farnham owns the largest and, I dare say, most entertaining establishment in Texas. Really? So we're colleagues, then? Yeah, you wish, Quince. He owns a casino. Damn. And it's not even in Austin or Dallas. It's actually in a little town called, uh, uh, yeah, what was it? Darn it. I, I looked it up the other day. It had a funny ring to it. I hate it when this happens! I thought they moved all Texan casinos to Vegas, where gambling is legal. You mean Ding Dong, Texas? <laughs> ding Dong! That's it! <laughs> Who'd ever think of a name like that? Well, casino or no casino, let's just hope he doesn't keep as many aces up his sleeve as the late Ventimiglia, huh? Amen. To my left, wearing brown boxes and weighing in at 396 pounds. Frank, show some respect, huh? The hospitality tycoon, Polly. Polly. Tycoon? I just own a small bar with pool tables. Clients drink close to nothing and play even less, but certain business transactions just couldn't happen anywhere else. Damn it, Polly. Why don't I know your last name? Because they took it away from me. You have no idea how good my ex-wife's lawyer is. <laughs> Women. They even take our damn names. <laughs> <laughs> you're too much, Polly. When you're done sightseeing, why don't you drop by La Iguana for a game of pool, and I'll buy you a drink. But I have to warn you, my clientele isn't crazy about furry fellas such as yourself. Thanks. I love me some pool. Perfect. It'll be my pleasure. You're looking to start your own pool business, Farnham? This guy here wants to start a boxing association in Texas. Guess who he's turning to for advice? To be honest, several things got me worried. So I'd be much obliged for any counseling. So, what worries you? Having to compete with illegal gamblers like that old Leary fella. Huh? <laughs> One would almost think that you live in New York, my friend. 
That son of a bitch killed one of my men and left the poor bastard on my damn porch. But he's a goner now. Ever since the sport got put on TV, people want a fair game, honest boxes, and no shady business. You can't break the law anymore like before. Nowadays, they gotta bribe those big network executives to negotiate for broadcasting rights. Billy Bob, bring out the bourbon. We're drying up here. I'll deal with a fresh deck, of course. We respect traditions in this establishment. Poker is as boring as it is simple. All you need to do is read people's faces. And even the worst detective has that trick up his sleeve. The real issue is knowing what to play for when there's much more than just money at stake. Damn it! What again? How many games have you won, Farnham? The worst player in Texas, huh? Hey, Quint, you better start unbuckling that championship belt. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't over yet. Mark my words. Farnham will be calling his wife before the night is over. Ha! Oh, hey, 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 by the way, did you guys hear about Kenny's wife? Pretty tragic, huh? What happened? Oh, playing bad luck. Hey, but Farnham, I'm, I'm sure you know more about it than I do. Anyway, Kenny, thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. <laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. Mm. And the poor fellow's already got enough on his hands now that his wife. Women just gotta have their vices. Their... But she's in a rehab clinic now, hooked on tranquilizers and all that. That's it, tranquilizers. Don't tell me women don't have their vices, too. Bring out the bourbon, Billy Bob. Come on. Come on. Give me, give me the bourbon. Maybe I spoke too soon when I said that poker is easy for a good detective. Let's just say it's relatively simple. There's always someone ready to surprise you. Relatively speaking. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be damned. I don't believe this. What happened, Farnham? Beginner's luck doesn't last forever. And that's when the real champ comes in. I hope you're ready to lose it all, my friend. <laughs> Poor Farnham. Came looking to make big bucks in the city with his boxing, and he's gonna lose it all with polka. <laughs> I hope your counseling will make up for it. Mm, yeah, so how can I be of help? Those their athletes hooking up with each other, like Al Stone and Helen Moore. I see you subscribe to What's News. Yeah, my star box, the reigning champion. He's having an affair with America's sweetheart. Hey, I got nothing against those two idiots falling in love. Don't get me wrong, but it's taking a toll on his performance. I don't think he'll lose against Yale, but I'm starting to worry a bit. You happy now? Sure thing. Although, there is something else. Come on, spit it out. I want to play. Rebel coaches like Joe Dunn. Oh, I see you've done your homework. That bastard wouldn't accept the most basic rules. For example, banning boxers from official competitions when their managers don't belong to my association. Hey, don't get me wrong. I'm sorry for his death. But if they ever find the murderer, I'd be glad to pay his lawyer fees. Come on, come on! Let's steal another hand before Quince accuses us of trying to break his winning streak. Ain't gonna happen. Gentlemen, I suggest you never tell your sons about this game. Unless you want to lose their respect. Wait, you mean our sons actually respect us? <laughs> I hear you. There's no way to set boys straight these days. They don't even respond to a good old beating.
than try not beating them. There are better ways to educate boys. Hey, careful, Quince. You're talking to a pro. So, uh, K K Kenny told me you had quite a houseful. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? No. That son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. Although the communist in me reveled in the sight of a millionaire choking on his own vomit. Even so, I couldn't just stand there and watch him die. No, deserving or not, the man would live. Ah. Six wanted something. I don't know how you deal with all of them. All boys? Does it have to be now? Oh, never let Quince near one of your daughters. Come on, Folly. Children are sacred. I won't Cassidy. lay a finger on them until they're 12. After that, well... <laughs> let's just say... Some men have needs that uh, can only be met by a young girl that age. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Are you all right, Farnham? That damn eagle represents the lowest scum of our society. There goes your winning streak, you sick bastard. Sooner or later, the police are gonna bust your ass. Quince. What the hell are you talking about? I bet you're as bad at hiding those poor girls as you are at keeping that ace up your sleeve. What? You lying piece of shit. Quince? Uh, don't believe a word he's saying, Frank. Don't you dare call me Frank. Billy Bob. It's 500 more. <laughs> For washing up. It's a deal. <laughs> hey, good call, Father. I owe you one. Please, take that flying scumbag's tokens. And mine too, if you want them. I'm feeling generous. Hey, turns out the governor accepted my suggestion to let Bobby yell out of prison on the day of the fight. Hey, this is turning out to be the perfect night. If you decide to go ahead with your new venture, call me Farnham. Your behavior at last night's game was utterly insulting. Never contact me again, or I'll put an end to your pathetic life. If our common acquaintance should ask you about your business endeavors, tell him that boxing is too violent for you. Signed, Frank Cassidy. tracks would be covered the following morning when Cassidy read this note from Farnham. Dear Mr. Cassidy, Though I'm grateful for your kind help, last night's game made me realize that boxing is just too violent for a peaceful Texan like myself. I have decided to invest elsewhere. Yours sincerely, Howard M. Farnham II. Damn Texans.
As for me, it was the first time in days that I had gone to bed without my daily bed. A real shame. Nothing like a bruised body to help you to sleep like a baby. Maybe I should have given myself a beat. Backside. Finally, I need you at the gym now, please. It was like this when I got here. Did you touch or move anything in here? Only the phone. Good. Calm down. I'll take care of this.